I want to ask you some techie questions because you're that mind here. Drones, more a force for good or evil? Oh, totally a, a, a force for good. Uh, moving things around, uh, being able to see forest fires, breaks in uh, electricity lines. There's a lot of amazing things that, that drones will do. The reason I ask is because your good friend Warren Buffett has, has warned in the past about biochemical attacks that are unmanned, maybe in the nose cone of a rocket, small cup pox perhaps over a heavily populated area or a stadium. Uh, does that concern you? Do you well, foresee that? Well, it's very hard to predict uh, if something super negative like that would happen. It's good for the world to consider it and try and take steps to minimize the chance of it. But the creation of drones doesn't substantially raise the risk there. Are you investing in drones at all? Uh, I don't have any specific investments. Uh, we, our foundation does a lot of work in agriculture, and the idea of drones being able to go out and see productivity and spot plant diseases, um, eventually, if we can get the range up, which is hard to do, even delivering medicines where the supplies are often uh, tough to maintain, uh, there's a, a lot of ways that they can be beneficial. Much has been made of unicorns, startups that are now worth a billion dollars. What's the most clever startup you've seen in the past five to seven years? You know, there's a lot of uh, great startups. I think Airbnb mm -hmm. is a pretty exciting one because it's kind of a global footprint. and. Uh, because people are choosing to list there and they're figuring out how to get that uh, quality of service really good, uh, it's in a strong position. A lot of new uh, uh, capabilities coming out of, of people like Airbnb and Uber. With all this talk of technology, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, whom I'm sure you know, uh, warned this week that technology could end up ending humanity at some point. Do you share that apocalyptic view of technology? Well, I think it's something that it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, super intelligence that it will necessarily always uh, have the same goals in mind that we do. You know, humans don't always have the same goal as other humans. So who gets control of the technology? How is it uh, built in? I don't think there's a need to panic, but I think the dialogue along those levels, the, the people who say, that's, let's not worry at all, I, I don't agree with that. Okay, well, let's take something that's very close now, and that's the encryption debate. You now have companies taking swipes at each other. You have the AT&T CEO, Randall Stevenson, kind of swatting at Tim Cook of Apple, saying it's not Apple's decision about whether to create a backdoor for law enforcement to protect, but it's rather the American people in Congress. Where do you stand on that issue of privacy versus security? Because of, you know, you're very close, obviously, to Microsoft. Well, it's a political question uh, whether the government should require that there be some way to get at the information. Uh, you know, the government's got the role, and we talked about terrorism, uh, which with bio or nuclear could be quite extreme. We count on the government to know what's going on. And, you know, so how do you strike the balance there uh, and still continue to make that possible? Uh, you know, it's great that's now in the political realm, and you know, I think people will decide that having government be completely blind doesn't really work for them.